Thank you. Thank you very much again, Claudio, for a kind invitation. Of course, this is a very important uh, session, and the fact that, uh, as you have uh, seen from the cases uh, that uh, Dr. Bellomo showed at the beginning, and also Claudio's presentation, assessment of a fluid, uh, both in emergency room and the ICU, is uh, really crucial. We are dealing with a different situation. Of course, we are going to immediately, in the case of a presenting to ID or ICU to evaluate a situation of a fluid overload or even dehydration. Just go through three clinical scenarios that are typical in our daily practice, acute heart failure, kidney disease, and sepsis. We'll see how can we really be able to detect the amount of a fluid overload or decrease in order to better manage our patients. Just go immediately to evaluate how congestion is important in a decision making for patients presented with acute heart failure. The just presented the recent European Society of Cardiology guidelines recommend immediately when the patient is going in with acute heart failure to evaluate the presence or not of congestion. Of course, let me tell you that 95% of these patients has congestion, and they call wet patients. On the other side, only 5% are not. Immediately after congestion, it is mandatory also to immediately detect how much is the perfusion on the organ. And of course, decision making for treatment is becoming so the fact that the patient is wet and warm, so you can use diuretic or vasodilators, or is wet and cold and the need for vasopressor is there. So there is no doubt that clinically, immediately, the congestion evaluation in acute heart failure patients is very important. But it's not only important because you are going to make a, a diagnosis and then the right treatment, it's also important because the clinical judgment of congestion in acute heart failure patients is the most important, relevant value for mortality of one year in this patient. So congestion is also linked with the severity of the disease. There is no doubt. If you are going to see a patient like this, there is no doubt that it is congestive. But you can also have many patients with acute heart failure that seems not congestive, but congestion is there. So in order to start an heart prepared treatment, you must carefully evaluate the presence of a fluid overload in patients with acute heart failure. Of course, the clinical approach is always the most important part. And in fact, the recent guidelines for European Society of Cardiology recommend to look at specific symptoms of congestion, breathless, orthopnea, paroxysmal lactone dyspnea, reduced exercise tolerance, but more importantly, if you really check very well your patient and you see the presence of elevated jugular venous pressure, epidural jugular reflux, the presence of third sound, that is very important as linked with fluid overload and acute heart failure. And even laterally displayed apical impulse are simply manoeuvres that I still recommend, especially to fellow, to do in any kind of these patients. But, of course, clinical judgment is always the most important part in acute heart failure patient, but also in many other patients, but there are some limitations in terms of evaluating the amount of fluid overload in acute heart failure patients. So we have some tools. What about chest X-ray? No doubt that chest X-ray is mandatory in order to evaluate the lung fluid content in these patients. Unfortunately, many of these patients can have normal chest X-ray, but congestion is there. So chest X-ray is important, but is not able to detect the presence of lung congestion in all acute heart failure patients. So we have some additive tools. We are going more and more uh, able to use this point-of-care ultrasound machine in order to detect the B lines or comets that are linked with the thorax fluid overload and before uh, chest X-ray are of great helpful in acute patients with heart failure in order to evaluate the amount of lung hyper congestion in acute heart failure patients. And we recommend, like we discussed with uh, Dr. Bellomo a few minutes ago, to evaluate vena cava dimension in order if it is circulating volume overload that's typical of these patients. We can also use a surrogate of a circulating overload, but 
uh, in this case, biomarkers such as BMP that are still recommended class 1A on recent guidelines, even before AKG, although are very important, are not only representative of fluid circulating intravascular overload, but also pressure overload. So BMP and triple BMP or mid-range IMP are okay, but are not really reflecting the total amount fluid overload in acute heart failure patients. And also, as you know, there are many caveats with these patients, including the kidney function. So although they are rec highly recommended, many caveats are with the interpretation of the natriuretic peptides. And even the recent guidelines say that you can have cardiac and non-cardiac uh, natriuretic peptide elevation that makes the things more complex. So, just coming now of the most important part of my presentation, I will try to share with you our experience with this device that Claudio already mentioned a few minutes ago, the bioimpedance system, that is based on the fact that if you apply current in the body, you can have two ways to, that the current is going to measure. The extravascular resistance, and the, that is the signal attenuation, and intracellular resistance that is making on the amount of cells on, of fat that are present in the body. And in this consensus position, maybe from emergency physician, intensivist, nephrologist, we were able to say that it is a very useful tool for evaluation, body, fluid content, in many cases of acute disease. Just coming back for our patients with acute heart failure, if you check clinical assessment, comets, chest X-ray, vena cava, you're just able to detect one third on total fluid, the fluid content. On the other side, if you use this BIVA, you can have more comprehensive evaluation of total body fluid content, including intracellular fluid overload. This very simple analysis, if you have a vector that is arrival in this part, is normal hydration, the green, the green zone. If you have a shorter uh, vector, you means that the patient is wet, so is overhydrated, and you need to use different treatment. And if the point is up this area, it's dry. So it's very simple, non-invasive, very cheap, and you can have a total amount of body fluid content. But from now, remember very well, bioimpedance is not able to detect the presence of a congestion into the lung, into the abdomen, so, and the ascites. So you must think that this kind of a body total evaluation is not calculating the intrathorax, intra-abdominal water content. So just make an example of this paper, nice paper from Piccoli, was clear that in patients presented with the shortest breath in emergency room, if you have a vector in this area, it means that dyspnea is not coming because of fluid overload, so it's not acute heart failure. Of course, if the patient has already edema or congestion, the clinical evidence, the vector is short and confirming. But I think the most important part using this technology in these patients that you can de detect the presence of a congestion, although clinically you cannot able to detect. So it's adding value to the clinical judgment. And this was really confirmed in our study. You see that the rock, the area under the um, rock curve is very, very high if you put together BIVA and the clinical signs. So starting from a clinical evaluation, and you are thinking that your patients have congestion because of acute heart failure, if you add BIVA, your comprehensive evaluation is much more precise. So any times, clinical evaluation is important, but if you add BIVA, you can have more possibility to detect the total fluid content. Into the gray zone, of biomarkers like BMP, that you have the grade zone of 140 or 400, you see that if you add BIVA, you can immediately detect if a patient has the value, for instance, of a BMP over 300, you add BIVA, and if BIVA is a short vector, it means that patient is congestive. So you can even better evaluate the uh, values of natriuretic peptides. These are right, right, just uh, came out paper from our group that demonstrate that, so there are three things that you can put together immediately 
very soon in all acute patients with heart failure. Clinical signs, edema or rails or any kind of clinical signs, BMP and BIVA. So if you use these together, you can have immediate assessment of the total fluid content that is what you need in order to start appropriate treatment. And also it's important to understand that this prognostic value that you see is very important in these patients is linked with the BIVA evaluation, is in multivariate analysis, systolic blood pressure and hydration value of more than 74 is linked with the poor prognosis at 30 days. Now, we just presented the case of acute heart failure, pulmonary edema, with the presence of left ventricular preserved ejection fraction. Recent guidelines still say that it's difficult to interpret the acute heart failure, the presence or not. We are using as much as possible BIVA and Galactin-3, a new biomarker of fibrosis in the heart that are strictly linked in the presence of congestion, also because Galactin-3 is reflecting the kidney fibrosis and also the heart fibrosis. So this is the algorithm in the recent book uh, just published two, two weeks ago that we recommend in the clinical I mean, approach of patients with acute heart failure, clinical judgment always is important. Then do chest X-ray, naturally peptides, then thorax ultrasound, point of care, and then a BIVA. If a BIVA is less than 74, congestion is not there. If it's a greater and a short vector, congestion is there. So putting together clinical judgment, naturally peptides, ultrasound, point of care, because again, BIVA is not able to detect uh, lung congestion and BIVA, you can have a comprehensive evaluation of a fluid, of a fluid overload in acute heart failure patients. Even you can monitor it, this fluid overload on the effect of your treatment. We know that you can decrease BMP using diuretics. And in fact, in our paper demonstrate that if you have a patient with acute heart failure and you properly treat with diuretic, you are expecting a decrease in BMP. And this is also followed by decrease in congestion by BIVA. So I mean, it's also a simply non-invasive way to monitoring the efficacy of your diuretic treatment, even to avoid too much use of diuretic in this patient that sometimes is insulting the kidney. And in fact, in this paper just came out, if the patient at the moment is discharged, is in this area and is not moving in the central, this means that this patient is going to have a recurrency of rehospitalization for uh, congestion in acute heart failure, while if it is moving in the red area, it means that patients can be discharged safely. In simply message to take it home, you just need to check the BIV evaluation at the arrival of patient acute heart failure and before discharge to be sure there is no congestion anymore. Just to briefly go in the kidney, Claudio showed very, very nicely in the, his presentation that the congestion is coming from the acute kidney injury in many patients. And we know also that the use of a diuretic is strictly linked with the kidney function. So in other words, you must be careful in using diuretic based on the kidney function because if you use improperly diuretic, the kidneys even insulted more, and you can have the diuretic re resistance that I'm sure you are familiar with in the improper use of a diuretic in patients with acute heart failure. Then how can we detect immediately the presence of AKI in patients with acute heart failure or worse renal functions in acute heart failure patients? Of course, we have biomarkers, and creatinine is always the best biomarkers we got, we will use forever, but we need something earlier than in the creatinine. And this setting, we published the value of uh, NGAL as biomarkers, all calm as patients in emergency room in order to detect the presence of AKI, and it was working very well. Unfortunately, in another study where we're looking into the great network to see if there is the role of uh, NGAL to detect uh, the presence of a worse renal function with the BMP in acute heart failure patients that was not working. So unfortunately, NGAL was not of utility in these patients. So we are looking now to check with BIVA how the biomarkers can help to detect immediately an acute heart failure patients or in sepsis patients the occurrence of AKI in order to detect the presence of fluid overload. And there are some promising 
cell cycle arrest biomarkers for the kidney injury. And just uh, briefly, I would like to share with you our experience with PenKid, a new biomarker that is a surrogate of a proencephaline that seems uh, to be very, very interesting in order to evaluate immediately at the moment the patients arrive, before the creatinine rise that takes two days to detect the presence of AKI in patients with acute heart failure. And in fact, in this paper that is uh, from a group of intensivists from UK and France, you see that proencephaline at the mission was the best predictor, much better than chromatin filtration rate in order to see which patient has worse relevant function. So in other words, if you put together these biomarkers and you are going to give diuretics, you can have some information with the BIVA in how much diuretic you can use in order to avoid worse relevant function. And now, see, you see in the slides that we presented, the ultrafiltration is important in some patients with diuretic resistance, and now we use uh, BIVA, hemodynamic non-invasive monitoring, ultrafiltration, and we are looking now, so some new biomarkers and the creatinine in order to detect when to stop the ultrafiltration, and if the case, repeat the ultrafiltration sometimes. Just last two minutes of my presentation, I will concentrate on the importance of to detect the presence of a fluid in the septic patients. It's a very challenging situation, and this is challenging because if you just look at the recent paper on JAMA on how to assess sepsis and septic shock, the phase from sepsis to septic shock is characterized by the fact that the fluid excitation is not properly working. It's very important. It's a key point. How can you really? Uh, okay, clinically, of course, you are looking at the patient with sepsis. is not going to be better because of the fluid uh, uh, administration, but you really want to measure that. It's very, very difficult. So first of all, we have another biomarker, this uh, bioadrenomedulin, that from our experience was able to detect the need for vasopressor. So we can add the moment that we had in sepsis patients, the use, uh, and it was septic uh, uh, group of uh, cohort of patients, if you use fluid balance increase for septic patients, you have the need for uh, evaluate this, you can evaluate uh, adrenomedulin in order to see how much fluid you need or not. More importantly, compare the two, Engal, proencephaline, Penkin, in this patient with the sepsis, was able to detect immediately the presence of AKI, while Engal was not because it was affected by sepsis for inflammation and the value was not good for the decision making. So very briefly, can we use BIVA? in order to detect the presence of dry patients in sepsis. We checked these and we compared, of course, this evaluation of the BIVA with the fluid balance, but also with the iteration score. It's very difficult to do that because uh, the iteration score are not accepted in the literature. So how can we really assess in septic patients the total presence of a fluid absence of increase? And from the preliminary data, it seems that uh, in the future, probably large cohort of study in septic patients could be addressed. These are preliminary data that seems that BIVA is able to detect in the, with the uh, presence of dehydration in patients with sepsis. Just uh, I would like to recommend the caveats with the BIVA because as every tool is easy to use, non-invasive, uh, very cheap, but you must uh, uh, again, to be, be very clear that there is no possibility to measure pericardial, preroyal, abdominal fusion. You must be very careful in put the electrode in presence of diaphoresis or excessive air. And you are able, not able, you need a patient to cooperate with you and also you don't want to take metal frame. Thank you very much for your attention.